your socks are in danger. The socks that you've been working on for days, for weeks, for months even, are perilously close to sagging around your ankles, to developing holes in the heel and toe, and sliding around your foot to where they don't fit well. The reason they're going to do this is because you haven't got gauge. Getting gauge can mean the difference between a sock that fits well and a sock from hell. Today on the Fiber Beat Video Supplement, I'll show you how to knit a speed swatch. I'll also share with you Charlene Church's tips on how to use your swatch to get gauge with the correct needle size. And we'll also review a few of Charlene's seminal sock books. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. Now this little bit of knitting here is called a speed swatch. And the reason it's called a speed swatch is that it mimics a bit of circular or tubular knitting without forcing you to actually do the complete circle. And the way that you achieve that is you knit a number of stitches. In this case, there are about 40 stitches across in um, stockinette. And then, instead of continuing around to do a circle, you loop the yarn around the back of the swatch. And I'll show you that. So if you look at the back of this swatch, you'll see there are a bunch of loops of yarn that sort of go across the back. And this sort of like fakes the circular bit of knitting. So to do the next row on the speed swatch, you loop the yarn around, and I sort of anchor it with my middle finger, and I'm knitting on circular needles here. So I hold it in place with my middle finger, and I knit that first stitch, and then I hold it down so that I don't pull the yarn too tight and cinch it across the back. And then I just keep on going across that row. And in this way, you fake the tubular knitting or the circular knitting by doing what's called a speed swatch. All right, so that's how you do the speed swatch. And what I learned in the class with Charlene Church is that you need to actually try several different needles to see if you're going to, or what will give you, the gauge that's recommended in the swatch. So you start off with a needle that's probably a little bit smaller than what's listed on the ball band. So if it says to use a size 3, usually with sock knitting, you want to probably start off with a size 2, a US 2 that is. And in this particular um, speed swatch, I did this bit down here with US 2. So starting on this row, I used a size 2 needle and did all of this piece here. And if you'll notice, in this area here, there are two holes. See, right here are the two holes. And I created those holes by doing a yarn over and a knit two together twice so that I maintain the stitch count and I create two holes here. Now the reason I wanted to do that was, you probably guessed it, I was using a size two needle. And then I continued on doing my little speed swatch through this entire area here. Now when I change needles, I want to make sure that it's really clear that I've done that. And in this area here, you'll see if I stretch it out a bit, that there are a series of holes all along there. It's almost like a little ladder demarking this area and this area. And the way that you achieve that is you do a knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, all the way across your speed swatch. And that will, again, maintain the same number of stitches, but make a very clear demarcation between those two areas. Then in this second area, I switched to a size one needle. And as you can tell, the gauge is getting a little bit smaller, a little bit more dense. It's a tighter fabric. And in the middle of this, again, I did a knit two together and a yarn over. And you'll see I have one hole there. 
So that lets me know that I used a size one needle in that section. And then this very top section up here, I switched to size zero, US zero needles. And you can tell this is the densest and most durable fabric that you can make for knitting socks. And in this very top section, I used size US zero needles. And it's probably very clear that it's a lot denser, a lot tighter than the previous row, and definitely more than the bottom row. And it just so happens that the sock that I was swatching for, I get gauge in this area, which is seven and a half stitches to the inch. When I started out, I was only getting six stitches to the inch. Therefore, it's really helpful to do your gauge swatch to see if you're going to get the proper gauge and ensure that you get a very durable sock. Next up, I'd like to show you the selection of books that Charlene has written. The one that you're probably most familiar with, or I hope that you are after having listened to the episode, is Sensational Knitted Socks. Now this is the first book that I got about sock knitting, and it's one of my favorites. One of the things that I really appreciated as a newbie sock knitter was the sock anatomy that is illustrated in the book. And you can see here that the different parts of the sock are knitted in different colors. In this case here, the cuff is knit with gold, the leg is in a bluish green color, the heel flap in a reddish orange, the heel turn very small is violet, and the gusset is orange, and the foot is dark green with the toe being red. She then mirrors that with the toe up sock, which I had never encountered before I saw this book. And it's really great. She shows you that in this particular construction, the toe is yellow, the foot is blue, the heel flap is green, which is a new sort of um, idea for me knitting in this direction. The heel turn is gold, the gusset and center back is red, with the leg being navy and then the cuff being orange. So that was a really great sort of like breaking it down in terms of color and the knitting itself. Also included are lots of really clear and easy to read colorful charts and when you get to the actual sock patterns, there is a division in the page that allows you to sort of quickly determine if you're using 4 DPNs, 5 DPNs, or two circular needles. Also included in this book are lovely stitch patterns that are photographed, as well as charts for color work such as these interesting ferrule patterns there with those charts and what she's recalling reticulated patterns which are just amazing and this sock is the sock on the cover. Now in her follow-up book, More Sensational Knitted Socks, one thing that I really liked that was a change even though they're all different patterns is she actually added how to do toe-up instructions for socks. And so each pattern in here, if it's applicable, will have top down and then toe up or short row heel and toe up socks, which is wonderful. In this book, all of the stitch patterns are in the back and all of the charts for color work are listed in the back too. Well, that wraps us up for this video supplement. Don't forget, you should always swatch to make sure that you are going to get gauge. Don't forget to also enter our contest for Charlene Church's Little Box of Socks. All that you need to do to enter the contest is to leave us your sock challenge. What challenges you the most when you knit socks? And you can leave that on the show notes at fiberbeat.com or on the Fiberbeat Ravelry Forum. My name is Wonder Mike, and I'll see you on the Fiber Beat.